So what I have today in Justin's corner would be out of my collection and will remain in my collection. Um, I have two coins, two ancient Greek coins. Let me know if you can tell what these are. Well, if you don't know, these are Athenian owl coins. And I love these two specifically. These two took me quite a while and a bit of bidding, uh, fierce bidding, actually, um, on both of these coins. And the fact that I was able to obtain these um, made me so joyful. Uh, I love looking at these uh, whenever I get a chance um, to sort through my collection. Uh, roughly, I have about uh, about 9 to 10 Athenian owl coins, and I plan on collecting more as I go. The difference between what makes these two separate from other Athenian owl coins, um, the one on the the left here is a full crested Athenian owl coin. What I mean by full full crested is that the plume goes throughout the helmet, all the way down to the bottom here. The one on the right is considered a half crested plume because the plume goes all the way through, but does not complete on the bottom. The one on the left weighs 17.19 grams, and the one on the right here weighs 17.14 grams. If you can find any of these out there in the market, whether through auction houses or eBay, um, always make sure that the, the devil's in the details. If they list these for anything below 17 grams, nine times out of 10, it will be a fake coin. And I'm out there to educate and not let people buy fakes that are out there, especially on platforms like eBay, for instance. Not saying, not to discredit eBay, but there are a lot of fakes you need to know what to look for. So, as we take a look at this one right here on the right, my half-crested, if I can get the camera to zoom in correctly here, um, it is just exquisite and beautiful. I really enjoy these coins. My wife enjoys these as well. Um, and every time I get a opportunity to purchase these, I try to purchase as many as I can. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether these came out of the 2014 uh, Turkish hoard that was found. Um, there was roughly about 60,000 that were found in that hoard. Um, but as far as I am aware, these might not have been, but I do have one that was, and I'll do a separate video on that one later. Here's the back of what they look like. You have your owl, uh, and the most striking feature to me would be the owl with the big eyes. <laughs> it is just, it's funny, but it's also lovely to look at. And the same thing with the one on the left. And I have these, between the seven to 10 that I do have, um, I have them in a variety. I have some that have test cuts in them, and some people ask me, uh, you know, when it comes to ancient coins, when they, they look at my collection and they say, well, why does this one have a test cut uh, through the face or on the side of it? And I just explain that, that to them that in ancient times, merchants would make test cuts to weed out fakes and make sure that these were, um, that the core of the coin is 100% uh, silver. So, as I said before, I do have some that have test cuts and I have some that don't have test cuts. As you can tell here, I have some that have um, weathering and wearing to it, as you can tell on the owl here. Um, you can't really see the feathers as much. You know, it looks like someone, you know, throughout the thousands, the centuries that this was handled and buried and found and dealt with uh, and traded for. You can see that the wearing has been done on this. But on this one, you can still make out a good portion of the feathers um, and the details that the coin has. Um, like I said, these are just exquisite pieces, and I love having these in my collection. And like I said, I do have a variety of these um, in all different configurations, really, and shapes. But they always come out the same. You have the four sides of the squeeze out from when, the, when this was casted. And you're talking an individual that had to have been relatively strong, you know, 2,000 plus years ago to be able to take a hammer and strike these coins. And with the Athenian owl coins, what, what relatively collectors have seen in graders like NGC, um, 
have collectively came across and set the standards for um, certain aspects of these coins to look for, you know, when it comes to fakes and not fakes. Uh, and like I said, the squeeze out is a good indication whether you have a real or a fake one. Um, you want to make sure that there's no folding these flanget cracks you see. If I can get them to pick up here, um, like right there and on the side there and down here, that's also a good indication of years uh, that you would want to see when it comes to um, a reproduction or a fake or what's real or what's not because over you can't a reproductionist is not going to be able to re you know reproduce or reproduct uh, these flanget cracks as you see here. If I can get my camera to focus here. It's going to be very difficult uh, to be able to reproduce that. Um, so that's another good indication that these are real. And like I said in the previous, in, earlier in the video, the the grams is also a good indication. Anything below 17 grams, is, I would steer clear from, it's probably going to be a fake. Um, and like I said, if you find one that has a um, test cut down the middle, that just proves that it's real also. And then, like I said, the test cuts were probably done during ancient times. And here's a good view of those flanged cracks, as you can tell right there. Here's a good one right there. And I'll give you a few here as viewers to look at my coin. And as I said, these are extremely um, exquisite and beautiful pieces, and I will always keep these in my collection. Um, and as I get uh, updated information, you know, on my collection and, you know, stuff comes back in, I have some gold pieces I'd like to also do a video on at some point as well. But thank you. Like, comment, and subscribe if you would like.